All right, I, I won a competition, but I can't, I don't know who cranked down that microphone. All right. <laughs> so you guys, are you guys ready for your next comedian? Your next comedian is the reason we are here in Sioux Falls. She's a hometown gal, gal here. She grew up here, and she was, yeah, she was visiting here, or she was coming out here, and she said, hey, I'm gonna be out in Sioux Falls during this week. Should, we should do a show here. And I was like, yeah. And so we decided to do a show, and you guys showed up! <laughs> all over Colorado, please give a warm welcome to Stephanie Springer! between 
between giving out participation awards at field day and encouraging our children to follow their bliss, we realized that infection was a little gentler on the ego than disease. <laughs> Maybe multitasking our self-care is like the right idea. 
idea. Like, why not go in for therapy and a pedicure? Like, those ladies are brutal. They have no problem expressing disgust over your trashed cuticles, so they'd probably be the first to point out your bad habit of ignoring red flags, you know? And they're just like killing two birds with one stone. It's like, ma'am, I'm gonna ask you to stay away from red nail polish in the future and men who still live with their mothers. <laughs> Plus, it's not like being a therapist is hard, right? I mean, it's just a lot of, well, how did that make you feel? <laughs> what would little Stephanie want? Okay, so when you have a lot of tattoos, they get a lot of attention, which is kind of like when you're hugely pregnant and the whole world is magnetically drawn to your belly and everyone pops up with their delivery room horror stories about how they almost died and their vagina has never been the same. Turkey waddle, anyone? And it's like, stand down people, this is the checkout line at Hy-Vee, not a support group sharing circle. And the checkout line is also a danger zone for the tattooed. Like once your cashier sees your ink positive, you're basically trapped and you have to stand there and smile and nod while well, they show off the ugliest glowing dandelion fluff tattoo ever. It's just a whole thing and you're like, I just came here to get some Chinese food, you know? I don't want your life story. But people also make a lot of assumptions about tattooed folks. Like, they're all chill and cool and laid back. You've got ink all over your body, you don't care. I absolutely care, okay? Like, I could not care more what you think of me. I have zero chill when I'm so type A that I actually add things I've already done to my to-do list so I can check them off. <laughs> yeah, that's a great thing. I'm basically a control freak in sheep's clothing, or a sheep sleeve, as it were. So, no, in addition to being a people pleaser, I'm also an empath, which, not sure if you knew, is a seriously catastrophic combination. Because not only do you care what people think, like you seriously fucking care. Like I'm up here freaking out that maybe one of you has a glowing dandelion fluff tattoo. <laughs> or an oddly shaped penis. <laughs> or God forbid, a dandelion tattoo on your penis and I've offended you. Like is there anyone out here named Tawny who's rocking that prepubescent bald eagle situation who like hates me now? And you might think that being a people pleasing empath would not lend well to stand up comedy. You'd be correct. <laughs> They're not here to roast anyone. Not the loud talker up front. Not soccer moms. Not politicians who hate dogs. <laughs> Approval, right? 
and hypoallergenic dogs are the worst because they basically exist to, you know, they basically exist to be a furry weighted blanket for their anxious owners, right? So like they really need to up their people pleasing game. They're like, hey, are you mad at me? Sorry I put my paws on your laptop when you're trying to work. I just love you so fucking much, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Please just keep looking at me the way you did this morning when you woke up and discovered that I was spooning you with my head on your pillow. And I could tell you were just like, oh, this is what love feels like. More of that, please. My dogs have zero survival skills. If they weren't harnessed, they just drop right into traffic with no idea they were even in danger. And it makes me question their priorities, right? It's like, they do literally nothing to keep themselves alive, but are totally neurotic about their need for approval and affection. Oh my god, you guys, I am my dogs. <laughs> Like, I can't change a tire or my carbon monoxide detector or a furnace filter, but I'm up here filled with crippling anxiety that there are therapists in the audience who think I don't appreciate their work. <laughs> Pass the Prozac, Tigger. Maybe hide it in some peanut butter. I love that shit. Thanks, everybody. That's my time.